have a wonderful, anointed, beautiful woman of God as my guest, Brittany, Hi, my sister Brittany. Um, and so tonight what I wanted to talk to you all about, well, what we wanted to share was the process of running to God while waiting for your mate. I know that a lot of people um, personally that I know and just in general in the world right now are, well, you know what, let me back up. Let's open up in prayer first. Father God, we come to you this this evening boldly before your throne. Father God, just seeking your face, coming humbly before your throne. Father God, I ask that anything that would keep me from hearing your voice and ministering what you would want me to say, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus right now, and I send it back to the pit of hell. I thank you, Father God, that we are willing vessels to speak and to minister and to edify and comfort and uplift the children of God that are viewing this this um this program right now in jesus name and we just ask that your presence saturates their atmosphere and saturates this place father god so that we will do your will only and um we eliminate anything coming from the the pit of hell and decree and declare that the word of god is truth and it is life and so if you agree with me say amen amen hallelujah Okay, so going back to tonight's topic is running to God while waiting for your mate. Now, I have this woman of God here with me because I wanted her to be able to share with you guys her experiences. I've been blessed, if you don't mind me saying, I was extremely blessed to be able to witness the covenant between her husband and God at their, um, at their wedding ceremony. And it was like, it had me in tears. I've never been to a wedding that was as anointed as that one. So I knew that uh, God was also doing some things for me being there because tonight this topic, running to God while waiting for your mate is something that I'm speaking from the heart. It's something that I'm literally doing right now. So, um, well, before, I go into the word, I just want to touch on some things that God has shown me. Look, this is a tab, this thing is so complicated, y'all, technology, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I don't always understand how it works, but um, thank you. Okay, so some questions that, or some things that I wanted to touch on is the first thing is how can, well, this is something that God showed me. While I was in a situation, if I could be a little transparent right now, and I'm believing God for um, someone that I do love, and I actually do believe that still will get married one day. However, we were moving. I realized that we jumped into the relationship really quickly. And I'm like, I want to marry you. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm not waiting forever, which is true. I'm not going to wait forever. But I was moving ahead of God. And I didn't realize that I didn't even know how to submit to God, let alone submit to a man that I wanted to be my husband. So the question the Holy Spirit posed to me was, how can you submit to your husband or the man that you want to be your husband if you don't even know how to submit to me? And that was my journey of realizing that it's not just about the marriage, the ceremony or having the ring or the feeling that you feel when, you know, when you're desiring to be married. It's about your relationship with God first, and then the relationship with your husband. How do you, do you agree, or what did God show you about that? Yes, I um, totally agree. I, um, before I got married, I didn't even think that I was gonna meet my husband. Um, actually, um, I was going, I've been through a series of relationships before, and they did not work out. Um, I've been in abusive relationships, I've been in relationships where um, I kind of forced myself into it. And it was, it was then I saw myself um, before the Lord and I said, you know, Lord, I, I really, I wanna do your will for my life. I wanna, um, I wanna walk in your ways. I wanna, so if, if, even if I don't ever get married, I, I wanna be, I wanna surrender to you. Literally two weeks later, I met my husband. Wow, see. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, two weeks later, <laughs> I met my husband. So, mind you, I, I'm 30 years old. So, um, before I, I got saved when I was 20 years old, the Lord called me into full time ministry um, five years ago, I believe. Yeah, about five years ago. And um, up until that point, I was still in bad relationships. I was still um, unsure about certain things, and I still had trust issues within my heart 
that are st- the Lord is still working on me now with, within my marriage. Right. And people think when you get married, it's all going to go away. <laughs> That's not true. That's what it, I was it hoping. Actually, they're like a mirror to you. So okay. He, he, it's like they're a mirror. So everything that you think that you fixed, you think that you, 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 you're like, oh, I'm good now. I'm, I'm ready to be married. I was totally not ready to be married when I met my husband. So right. um, I, I, to me, it's like you – People say, let's prepare. Let's prepare this. Let's get your finances in order. Let's get this in order. Let's get that in order. And then, boom, he's going to pop up in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, 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 I, and that's what I was thinking. I was like, I got to get my finances in order. I have to get this in order. I have to get that in order. And then uh, I'll meet my husband. And that's not how it happened. Um, the Lord showed me that you need to, your heart needs to be healed. You need to renew your mind. Because especially if you're asking for a man of God. Right, yes. So, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. If you're asking for a man of God, and then you can't even get that right, and you get into a relationship and you try to submit, that word submission um, for some women, um, and even for myself, it's a, it's a difficult thing. So you're like, I'm, I've been doing this on my own for so long, and uh, I'm not about to submit to nobody. So you have to get that right. Trust issues right. You need to get deliverance. And then... The Lord will begin to heal. So he'll, he'll show you that person that you're supposed to be with. Uh, the Lord, he's not going to actually, the woman is not supposed to find the man. The right, Bible says right. that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So Goward, my husband, actually saw me. I was worshiping the Lord. So the day when I went to, when I was um, at this prophetic meeting, uh, I was just, I was there worshiping the Lord and Goward saw me. See, there's so many points that you made that I actually do want to touch on. Um, one being um, when you talked about basically being whole and within yourself, knowing who you are is what I'm summing it up to be. You have to, through the deliverance, through your time in prayer, through allowing God to, to, to step into those inward parts that need to be healed, that a lot of us don't even want to allow anyone to get into that place because when you're dealing with deliverance, you have to deal with the pain of the thing that you went through. And oftentimes we try and bury that stuff deep within us. And in order, f- what, I'm, what God has shown me is that in order for me to get to that next place that he wants me to step into, I have to deal with that stuff. I have to become vulnerable to him to allow him to work within me. And then sometimes what happens is if we don't allow God to do that, we step into how you said relationships, um, either we force ourselves into relationships or we just accept something that is not, that's beneath our worth. And not to say that there's, there's somebody for everybody. So when I say beneath our worth, it's what where we are with God and God knows sometimes I don't know about you but I've or you just said it (laughs) actually got into relationships whether it was abusive verbally or physically um God created us in his image so anything that we allow into our lives and accept that's not a a reflection of who he is is beneath us it is something that he didn't create us to to even entertain but through the process of our relationship with God and the process of us walking through life we have to find that stuff out on his own on our own and I wish I wish that it was easier and God could just say no go right go left go you know do this do that um but then where would faith be well, uh, that's, that's a whole nother thing. But um, I was going to say, one thing God did tell me was when we become whole and rooted in our foundation with the most high God, we can fulfill our purpose things with more sureness and excellence, which means that knowing who we are can, eliminates confusion. Knowing who we are creates boundaries so we don't step into whether it's a relationship with a, with a male, whether it's friendships. We don't step into situations allowing people to treat us any kind of way because the Holy Spirit, our relationship with God, we're tight. And God is letting us know that this is, what I, this is how I want you to handle certain situations. And when we're just sure of who he is to us and who we are to him, then it eliminates any, no one else. Satan can't get in through another vessel to try and tell us who we are or try and convince us what we're worth because we know God's word and we believe his word. And then another thing that um, being rooted in our foundation with God let me know was that 
knowing who we are, knowing who he is and our purpose allows us to have a clear vision of what we want. I know for myself, I've been in situations and, and this particular relationship of that relationship that I'm talking about that I, that I still am believing God for, um, some years ago, I realized that I didn't even know, know what I wanted with my own life. So how could I then put all this pressure on this man to fulfill a desire and a need that I wanted, but I didn't really know what it was, and I was looking to the wrong person for it when I should have been looking to my father for it. My heavenly father, not my natural father, even though God gave, you know, my heavenly father. <laughs> you have, yeah, do you have anything to say about your process? Um, or if you could tell me a time where, when did the light bulb go off for you when you were like, Lord, I get it. That's why these cycles have, ha that's why things have happened the way that they've happened for me because just when did that epiphany happen for you? Um, so the last, like, so-called relationship I um, found myself in, it was, it was just terrible. So I mm. just was just, it, it brought me to a place where I was inside of my um, car crying. And I had got off, I got off of work, I, have gotten, I got off of work, and I was sitting in my car, and I was like, how can I, um, I sinned against the Lord. And I was like, how can I, how can I sin against um, my heavenly father? So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm sinning against my father. I'm um, doing something that's displeasing to him. And I, I found myself in tears, and it, it kind of, it, it makes me emotional even thinking right. about it now. Because I'm just like, how can I do such a thing to someone who loves me so much? So I sat there in my car, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, Lord, I, I surrender this to you. I surrender this to you. And then for like two or three weeks, I was um, meditating on, um, um, I, I believe it was when David sinned against um, the Lord with Bathsheba. Yes. And he said, um, Lord, create in me a pure heart. Um, and I, and, I, and I, I remember that scripture very vividly because I was um, meditating on it for several weeks. And, um, and I said that, and I was, I was saying it like it was a prayer. Yeah. And um, now, now br bringing those things back to me, sometimes you, when, when, you, when you get married, you forget those things. And uh, when I got married to Goward, we were so, we were moving here and moving there, doing this, doing that, that I, I moved away from that. I do. Where I'm going? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you 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 like okay. I got the ring now. Um, the anointed wedding. Oh, everybody's like, oh, they look yeah. so beautiful. Uh -huh. they look so beautiful. <laughs> but then you have to remember. Um, um, and I, even before I came on here, someone said you got to go back always to go back to the word. So we have to remember as women to go back to the word of God. And that is where the healing is going to take place when we're in the presence of the king. So yes. when I was in the yes, presence Lord. of him and I surrendered to him mm -hmm. and I was at my breaking point, that's when I realized like I do not want to do this anymore. I don't want to be in this cycle in this type of relationship. And, and I literally I met Gower two weeks later. And I knew he was my husband because when I when I said that when we were outside, uh, I told the Lord, you know, what what I wanted, and He gives you He give you what you want, and then it's up to you how you treat it. Right, that's true. So I'm held responsible for how I treat my husband. Yes, Hallelujah. And so um, the thing that you were saying about reaching your breaking point. I find that, um, or even getting lost in forgetting that, or getting lost in the glitz and the glam of things, and that is sometimes when something manifests, you get so excited that you do forget to go back to the source. Because you're moving so you're moving so fast, so you're like, yes. I just I just got married. Um, we just had the, the, the oh the big wedding. Everybody's like, oh everything's so nice. Look at the nice um, birds on the side. Yeah, <laughs> and those <laughs> birds. The yeah, listen, like, <laughs> the birds were worshiping. <laughs> they were watching. <laughs> they were watching. And then when everything's all said and done. We go, we go, we go, we're, we're, we go to the house and we're, we're we're preparing to move. We're preparing to do this and all along the Lord. And then and, and then you can have you have disagreements. Right. And um, but you have to. You have to fight with the Lord. So if, you, if you're fighting with the Lord and you're remembering those promises before you meet the one that the Lord sends you, you're meditating on your promises. You're meditating on the word of God. Um, you're doing the things you did before. Like I'm, you, you continue to do those things is what I'm saying. Yes. So when, you, when, you're, when you're single and you're waiting on the Lord for your husband, 
um, the same things you were doing when you were single, when you were praying against stuff and you were casting out demons and you were on the floor talking about, Lord, help me. You need to do the same things when you're married. Yes, yes. And that go, oh, go ahead. I'm just saying that's where the Lord is actually speaking to me and bringing me back to remembrance. Like, um, you have never arrived to a point where you feel like you have everything, you know everything, and he's speaking to me right in this moment. Hallelujah, glory. And that brings me to, um, I was, God was letting me know that in my process of waiting, see, for me, it was frustrating because I felt like I've met my mate, but what? Like, what's going on? Why are we having all these issues? What's really good, Lord? And the thing was that an inheritance received too early is not blessed. And this is something, this is a scripture that I'll repeat a few times on my show so you'll hear it. And I say that because that lets me know, that's God's reminder to me about being patient. And the scripture also says that the, the ending of a thing is better than the beginning. And that's found in Ecclesiastes verse seven, chapter seven, verse eight. It says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And so that, yes, and so that's where God had to renew my mind and really check me multiple times. Like I was getting checked over and over and over thinking that I knew it all and not really realizing that I was being hasty, that I was being anxious, and also that I was putting this relationship and this man in place of my heavenly father. And God was, the Holy Spirit um, had to convict me and let me know that my relationship, God is more concerned with my individual purpose first than he is with my marital covenant with the man that I'm desire, He's like, yes, I want you to have the desires of your heart, but it's you and I first. It's you and I before anything, any friendship, any job, any, any of that. So that's why the scripture says, seek me first. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall follow you. And so um, that was something that even now, I mean, even now I have to remind myself because I feel like, I don't know if any of the viewers have got to a place where, I'm seeking you, God. I've been seeking you. So what? Where, where is the blessing? What's going on? Um, it's, I'm just, it's better to be patient because in every step, in every process, there is something that God wants for you to, there's a revelation that he has for you. So don't be quick to try and jump the gun because you're, because your senses are, are, because you're feeling sensual, which is what I'm saying is that your senses are making you feel like, Oh, you know, I love him, or, or uh, it, it just feels right. It may feel right, but not be the right time. Yeah. Right. And I was just gonna say that every time you give pieces of yourself to someone that mm -hmm. um, is not of you, that is not for you, and that you're not supposed to be with, you you kind of like you, you lose yourself. So then you, what happens is you go year after year, maybe you spend four or five years with that person. Um, you're, you're giving of yourself. You're, um, you're, you're basically wasting your time. So then you get out of that five-year relationship, and then you're like, okay, okay, Lord. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> so you're like, you, you, you're like, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm really going to do this. And then you try for one year. And then you're, 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 you're celibate. You're, you're, you're reading the Bible. You're doing all that for the one year. And then he walks by. <laughs> Some, yeah. He walks by and you're like, okay. your job, right. He be like, I rebuke that in the name. <laughs> I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And then and then you you fall. That's what happened with me. I don't know about anybody else, but that's what's happened with hap with guilty. That, that that's what happened with me. So and then I fell and I find myself crying. And then um and then I finally, like I said, I finally surrendered and then I met my husband. Um, so that doesn't mean all your problems go away. Everything goes away. Cause, so I thought at one point, because I'm so used to ministering to people and um, sharing my testimony, because uh, this, is, this is just part of my testimony. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I share, and I, I'm so used to sharing that um, I was like, you know, I'm the deliverance minister here. I'm the one that, you know, goes out and goes and does these things. And, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then you get married and that person is a mirror. So you, and then he's a man of God on top of that. Yes. So you have to be prepared. If you're praying for a man of God, you need to be prepared to serve him, to submit to him, mm -hmm. um, 
to do all of these things that we are supposed to do as a wife, because if you're not, then you're not prepared. Um, when the Lord sent me Goward, I was not prepared. And I always tell people that I was not prepared to meet him, but we met. And um, we're and I'm here with him, and, and I love him. We have we have our um, our difficulties and our problems, but I know that that's my husband at the end of the day. So it doesn't matter when I roll over and I look at him. I know that that is my husband. And I know that um, when the enemy tries to attack me, um, I have to realize that I have to realize that he is going to try to come and attack me. He is going to try to come and attack my mind. But it's my responsibility to pull back up those scriptures that I was praying yes, before. Um, pull back up those scriptures that I was um, that I was meditating on before um, I met him. Yes. So, uh, you, have, you have to go back to that. Go back to the Bible. Go back to getting on your knees, praying. Because it's not. A, it's, it's people think that it's, it's it's about it's about a man. It's about getting a husband. That's not what it's about. It's not about that. So we have to we have to we have to realize what is it about. So we're we're, we're praying for our mate, right? We're praying for our husband. We're praying for to, to, to be with someone because no one wants to be alone. The Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. Right. And no one no one wants to be alone. But the but the but going going to the father in those moments where you're feeling like you're by yourself, going to him in those moments where you feel like you're at your weakest, going to him in those moments are the most important thing. Um, cleaning your heart out, uh, renewing your mind, getting delivered, um, being prepared in order to submit to a man of God. It's, it's different when you when you're talking about a regular um, yeah. man out in the world. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a man of God who is reading the Bible, casting out spirits, um, um, laying hands, and, and watching people be um, healed and delivered. That's what. That's the type of man that I'm talking about right now. Being able to serve him because if you're not ready to serve him, then you're not ready to be married. And um, I, I'm speaking to myself. Yeah. Um, I'm married, and I still am learning how to do this. And if you didn't grow up seeing that type of um, relationship modeled in front of you, you can go to church all day and sit in front of the church, and they tell you, um, the wives submit to your husband as unto the Lord, right. and, um, and, and, and all of these different things. But if none of those things were modeled to you, if none of those things you've seen, it, it, it's another story when you're living it and you're married to a man of God. Yes, so and even if you have seen it modeled, right. it still is another thing when you're in it. You have to be discipled. Yes. So now yes. when I see women that are married, I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, okay. And I see other women that um, have been married. Um, they come and speak life into me. Um, before I came here, someone was speaking life into me. Praise the Lord. Two people. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I always thank the Lord for that because I, I, I know that that, that is from the Lord. So we have to continue to seek him, continue to be healed, set free, and delivered in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And so basically, um, to summarize all this, and I really appreciate and appreciate you for coming on tonight with me. And also, I honor you for being transparent because sometimes it's hard to just be honest to let people know or to give them a piece of our hearts. But after all this that we have spoke about, I just pray that what, you're, what you got out of it was in the process of waiting for your mate and running to God is that you never get out of position with you and God. And so because anything that we do on this earth, it's God's will be done, not our own. So in our marriage, we want to make sure that we're doing the will of God. In our home life with our children, we want to make sure that we're doing the will of God. In the workplace, we want to make sure that we're doing the will of God. Even the way that we spend our finances, we want to make sure that in every area of our lives that we are doing the will of God. So if you have stepped out of a place of alignment with it when it's just you and the Father and you've allowed the cares of the world to, to kind of contaminate or... Um, give you a little bit staticky feed so you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, then I would suggest you take a step back, um, probably fast for three days. Um, just meditate and, and, and hear the instruction that God would have you to, that God would give to you so that you can be strengthened and renewed and know that it's not too late. It's not too late to get it's not too late to get it right as long as you're being obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then God did not come that any man, Jesus didn't come that any man shall perish, but that all shall come to repentance. So no matter what it is that you've done or that you're currently doing, as long as you give it over, lay it on the altar to God, give, get back in right standing with him, and he will direct your path. He will direct your steps. He will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path as long as you choose to serve him and give it to him. Give it to him. 
Hallelujah. So thank you all tonight for joining in with us. I pray that you were blessed, encouraged, comforted, and edified with, the, with our stories, um, with our testimonies. And I will see you again next Tuesday. God bless you all and good night. Bye, you guys.